Our fight is against fear and not imaginary hardships. Or to use the language of the state prosecutor, so-called hardships. Basically, my lord, we fight against two features which are the hallmarks of African life in South Africa and which are entrenched by legislation which we seek to have repealed. These features are poverty and lack of human dignity. And we do not need communists or so-called agitators to teach us about these things. South Africa is the richest country in Africa and could be one of the richest countries in the world. But it is a land of extremes and remarkable countries from remarkable to white and draw what may well be the highest standard of living in the world whilst Africans live in poverty and misery. 40% of the Africans live in hopelessly overcrowded and in some cases drought-stricken reserves where soil erosion and the overworking of the soil make it impossible for them to live properly off the land. 30% are laborers, labor tents, and squatters on white farms, and work and live under conditions similar to those of the first of the Middle Ages. The other 30% live in towns where they have developed economic and social habits which bring them closer, in many respects, to white standards. Yet most Africans, even in this group, are impoverished by low incomes and the high cost of living. The highest paid and the most prosperous section of urban African life is in Johannesburg, yet their actual position is desperate. The latest figures were given on the 25th of March 1964 by Mr. Carr, manager of the Johannesburg Non-European Affairs Department. The poverty datum line for the average African family in Johannesburg, according to Mr. Carl's department, is 42 rand, 84 cents per month. He showed that the average monthly wage is 32 rand, 24 cents, and that 46 percent of all African families in Johannesburg do not earn enough to keep them going. goes hand in hand with malnutrition and disease. The incidence of malnutrition and deficient diseases is very high among Africans. Tuberculosis, pelagra, kwashioko, gastroenteritis, and scare bring death and destruction of health. The incidence of infant mortality is one of the highest in the world. According to the Medical Office of Health for Pretoria, it is estimated 
that tuberculosis kills 40 people a day. Almost all Africans. And in 1961, there were 58,491 new cases reported. These diseases, my lord, not only destroy the vital organs of the body, but they result in retarded mental conditions and lack of initiative and reduce powers of concentration. The secondary results of such conditions affect the whole community and the standard of work performed by Africans. The complaint of Africans, however, is not only that they are poor and quite are rich, but that the laws which are made by the white are designed to preserve the situation. 